Welcome to No More Chaos with Constance. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, I'm guilty. I am guilty of scattering constant values all over my apps, um, from text to default values to whatever it is. Um, I declare the constant. Well, I declare something because we don't have necessarily a, a construct of a constant uh, in AL, but I, I, I declare the values I need where I need them. Um, and um, then I go search when I, oh, I wonder where that is defined and then typically are defined very close to where I'm going to use it. Uh, and I'm probably also guilty of ending up declaring the same value uh, in more than one place because I need to use it in two places. Um, but I want to do better. I've been thinking a lot about this because I was doing something that had quite a, quite a lot of constant uh, values uh, involved. Um, so what I really want to do is uh, come up with a way to uh, to handle this. Um, so that's what we're, we're going to do in this video. Um, if you already are handling this, then I want to know how. Uh, I want to know in the, in, in the comments. Let, 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 let us know what you're doing. Maybe maybe what I'm doing. Maybe what I'm about to show or come up with is not nearly as good as what you have come up with. So uh, show me. Um, but anyway, let's let's get let's get to this. Um, and I have started the usual app, you know, I'll go get the new app. And the funny thing is, there is a constant in 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 this little app example that always comes up. The, the hello world thing uh, because there's a string here and um, let's see if we can treat this as a constant and kind of get some some uh, some orders in in the in the chaos so so what can we do with this well we could um, we we could say that hey there's something called welcome and then we can go down here and say var and declare welcome and now we actually don't have does not have to be a string we could go and say this is a label and now so now that that's kind of a constant well well it is a constant uh, because you cannot change the constant of a label um, but it's still sitting inside a single object. So if I need the app published hello world check somewhere else, uh, I still need to uh, to get it, define it again. Um, and I don't want to do that. I want to have it in a central place. So what I'm thinking is that I want to create a new, uh, new code unit. Let's call it constants AL. Um, and um, well, it's probably a code unit, and I'll call it my constants. Um, and I think that the very first thing I want to do is um, is saying that this code unit is a single instant code unit because I'm going to use it in multiple places. There's no, no reason for uh, for the service tier for for Bin Central to allocate. Uh, an instance of, of this code unit in memory every time I use it because it's just gonna be constants um, and nothing else. So now we we got a place. That's our place. Uh, so how do we use it? Well, clearly, so we need to get, take this thing we have here and then I'll put it, clip this way and put it in here it looks good so if we have uh, welcome to which is also a label then uh hello youtube there we go whoops wow 
this looks nice. Now we have all our things in a in a in a row, um, well organized, and we can uh, we can see this here. Um, but how do we use this? Um, we could let's see. So let's say constants here, and then that's a code unit. My constants. So we can go up here, and then we say constants dot run. So we can we cannot see the labels. We have we cannot see you cannot see the globals um, here, and uh, we don't really have any any funky attributes we could we have a scope that's a method uh, um, so so that won't work I was, I was just thinking about my perhaps we could do protected var because you know that's the how you can get a global on a page to also show up on the page extension and so on but that doesn't work. So even though we have them here, we need a, a getter of some sort. We need a way to to, to get the value. Um, and um, for that, we kind of need to create a procedure. So if I create a procedure called welcome, That tells me that yeah, you must have a body. We need to give it a, a, a type in this case. Label is not a type. Text is a type. And then we can go exit welcome. But now we kind of have an issue, right? Now we have overused the uh, the label welcome. Um, so perhaps we need to. Because this is one that we can see. This is one that you cannot see from the outside. So maybe we want to underscore the the internal value. And and now uh, there's a procedure called welcome uh, that will just return a value. Um, and that kind of works like it. So so there is a now we can say welcome. And and right now we have this weird thing in AL that you can call a procedure without the parentheses. This might go away. I'm actually not sure. There's probably, uh, if I turn on all the, the code analysis, there's probably s some part that will yell at me. But but right now, we, we this works. So uh, we can actually just say that we will use welcome to. We don't have that on, so we put an underscore on it. Uh, so now we should get the the hello YouTube. Wakey wakey, there we go. Let's see if we can hello YouTube. So now we got the other the other. Oops! Wow. The other global. Um, you could, we could, of course, also just create this as a procedure, something else. Um, and in this case, let's also do a text. And if this is This will also work. Uh, so this string will, will never get translated if you run translation. These labels will. We, we, of course, have the option of saying that this is locked, so it will not get translated. Um, but, but you have options. Um, but the great thing about this is that now with AL, we have the, um, uh, I'll just call this, uh, what should I call it? Um, data. Now with AL, we have a 
actually an option of look at look at all the types we've come a long way um so we could you know return json so now this will require a bit of um um json object uh and then you have to build it so we we could say read from and then do Uh, and then exit J. So now the constant is still sitting in here. Um, if you got if if we're gonna do this a lot, then we might want to cache this. So the first time we 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 pass, and the second time we just grab the past uh, value we have in order not to. If you have like a big uh, big JSON, you don't pass it every time you, you're gonna grab uh, that thing but this is constant works just as fine as anything else in this case we probably gonna do this so everything that gets passed into a message gets formatted So we get the JSON formatted back. Um, but what I like about this approach, and and you know, you can get into a uh, there's a bit more. You, you got to type a bit more here, but but you're kind of uh, isolating all the stuff you have. Um, inside a single object uh, so this is where you go and, and oh i need to change something well this is where all those constants are um maybe maybe i should um maybe i should tell what i meant by by um by caching um so let's just create two globals here uh data Let's just do data cached as a boolean and then uh, underscore data. That's a JSON. Oh, let's get rid of the debugger. A JSON object. So here I would then go if data cached, then exit underscore data. Else begin. Uh, and now let's we need to get rid of this guy so we'll do it's probably better to see if data I'm, I'm let, let's if data is not cached I think that's the shorter execution path uh, then data read wow data read from this data cached equal true uh, and there we go so if it's not cached read it cache set the cache flag and exit uh, and now it, it, you see <laughs> Okay, <laughs> can you spot the bug here? Because that, that's actually hilarious. So, data dot read from that's valid syntax because data is the function that returns. So, this would I can't even. This would end in an endless loop and probably gives us a, a stack uh, stack arrow uh, anyway it, of course it should be underscore data there you go um, and the reason I set the flag is that uh, I don't believe in this case we have a uh, 
a a good way to see if this is an empty object or not uh, because that I think then we need to get the keys and see that there are no keys or we need to get the values and see there's no values uh, so I don't think there is a fast way for us to determine if the JSON object is empty or not um, well, that's why I set the flag uh, so let, let's let's uh, let's do this constant so we'll, we'll actually just do this twice here constants data then let's set a breakpoint bingo That's the breakpoint. So data cached is false. Read from data is true. Exit data. I hit a five. We get the next break. Now it's cached. We just exit what we have. And now we get it a third time. This is this is awesome that I I, I get this on video. Uh, if if there's anyone from Microsoft who's still online, uh, sometimes the unopened page gets triggered multiple times. Uh, it's kind of weird. So we go. Of course, we cached. So now we're on number four. I had a five. Uh, number f five times, six times. So one, two, three. Welcome boxes. That's a weird bug. Um, but um, now, now we got it on film. Um, anyway, since we had to call it six times, thank God we cached it so we don't have to do the parsing of the JSON every time. Um, so, of course, now it, it, this looks less and less as as a as just a list of constants and and more just a regular code but the idea still stands and maybe this thing uh, is actually um, the the a, a label so we can go uh, and then let's do an underscore because that was the syntax we, we worked with here uh, underscore json label uh, label there we go like this um, and maybe that one is for sure locked right so so now we have still preserved uh, the values down here um, when it comes to to integers uh, non-text stuff we cannot do this so that they will have to be up up here somehow in in, in the list like like this one anyway i kind of like this approach uh to to get stuff uh stuff isolated and 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 centralized um, of course it would be actually cool if we had the concept uh of, of support in the system uh, for something like this but until we get that I think this this approach will work for me. Let me let me know what what, what you're doing. Let me know what you think after you've seen my uh, my attempt here. And uh, if you're still up for uh, for more AL development, check out this video. It's a good one. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.